Friends Podcast. Hi, I'm Diane Hunt. I am an impressionist realist painter connecting with nature through my brush. I work in oil paint and watercolor and I live in the countryside of Maryland's eastern shore, not far from the Chesapeake Bay. You can find me online at dianehuntstudio.com and on Facebook and Instagram at Diane Hunt Studio. Hi, I'm Constance Brosson of Steve Brosson's Jewelry Designs. I live in Oklahoma on a prairie, and I make uh, handmade jewelry in silver, copper, and brass. I'm an artist that paints. I paint pastels and in oil sometimes. Hello, this is Clyde JKL. I'm the host of this podcast. I am a emerging representational artist. I do historic rend- renderings, seascapes, landscapes, botanicals, birds, and whatnot. The tight illustrative hand in watercolor, pen and ink, and acrylic paints. And I live in Oklahoma City. Okay, here we are once again. This is Monday, January the 20th, and this is episode 30 of the Artist Friends Podcast. This is Clyde J. Kell, and I am here with Diane Hunt and Constance Bronson. And now we skipped last week because of uh, some illness. Uh, Constance was down sick, and so was I. And so we're on the recovery, and... Uh, Excuse us if we, uh, I'll try to edit out any of our coughs that we might, uh, might come across. So we don't blow your ears out. All right. Last week, the theme was supposed to be a, um, what we, I call a collector story. You know, we always, uh, the artists, we tell our story of what motivated us, what inspired us uh, to create our artwork, but it's always interesting to hear what the collectors what how our art affects them and diane was uh telling me a, a story about the, some of her collectors and plus i have some some stories and constant does too so we're going to start out tonight just talking a little sharing a little bit of the how our art affects our collectors and uh, what they uh receive from our art diane you want to start off okay um the last thing I did was a commission for someone and it um, it's really interesting how those kind of, especially the commissions affect people and how they react to um, getting a surprise gift like that of, of something that means you know has a real deep meaning to them um, the one I did was of a um, peer on this person's property and they're selling their property because they've gotten older now and they're going to be moving and so it was, it was really um, <clears throat> a sentimental, you know, picture for them to remember the place by. And so it was, you know, it's just a nice, um, it's really nice to be able to share that with people and to ha- help them hold on to their memories. Yeah. I um, did a booklet that went with the painting um, of the process of how the painting developed from the blank canvas all the way through to the finished product. And it was just something, a little extra that I, you know, threw in to help them um, see how it progressed and how it became a painting of their favorite place. So it was kind of nice. You know, it's just. Wow. Yeah, that is, that is nice. Uh, Constance, you, yeah, you made quite a bit of jewelry. You sell quite a bit of jewelry. What's some of the reactions of your jewelry, jewelry that uh, you've received from customers you also participate in several shows so i know you have a uh, an opportunity to 
speak to people directly. You got any any unique sh- stories that stick out in your mind? That- people usually when they come in, uh, apparently in this area, wire wrapping jewelry is not prevalent. So when they come in, they're just awed by the um, by the intricacy of wire wrapping jewelry and and how it gets done and and uh, one of one of the last the last show that I was in there was a couple that came in and he wanted to buy her one of my necklaces and so they ended up buying two of them which was great for me you know but they really loved the the uh, wire wrap jewelry so um, it was nice it's nice when people come in the booth and they're really uh, taken by the process of wire wrapping uh, you can make it a very simple wire wrap all the way to just a very intricate where I spent almost a week making the piece which I put layers and layers of different kinds of wraps of wire around the stone to hold it in place because I don't use glue or anything like that um, it's all it's all the the stone is usually set in there and if you want to get it out you're gonna have to take a pair of cutters and cut the whole piece up in order to get the stone out so anyway um yeah it's nice when you get a nice reaction from people yeah it is it's really it it, that's that's something that's, that's always amazed me and i have to be careful uh i don't take it for granted uh you know i'm used to just sitting down and drawing something and painting something and i don't i mean i get personal satisfaction if it comes out uh compared to the image i have in my mind but uh it's a uh, it amazes me how the reaction that uh, some people have you know to my art Uh, i most of my commissions have been uh, pet portraits and while i don't advertise myself as a pet portrait artist I seem to have fallen into that. And then the other thing, like, I, like with Diane and Constance, uh, I was laughing with the telling them they're it's dead pet portraits. These are animals, folks, cats and dogs, and fish and turtles that have passed away. And so they want a, uh, portrait of, uh, their, uh, loved animal. It's for themselves or a relative and invariably every single time when i present the finished piece to them they start tearing up and in fact i used to joke i'm going to have to also hand them a package of tissue (laughs) (laughs) and it just it warms my heart to no end and also puts even more pressure on me responsibility to, to capture that loved animal to where it's you know, because it's something, it, it's a, you're, I'm touching the very sensitive part of another human being, their soul. And uh, so I've been very, I consider myself blessed and fortunate that I've been able to do that, which is why I also don't advertise myself as a pet portrait because of that responsibility. I, uh, I would just hate to destroy somebody with, you know, with doing a bad piece of artwork. Yeah. You know? So that's that's the wonderful thing about being an artist, right? Where we can we can yeah. reach out and touch. I used to do a fair, a, yeah. I used to do some pet portraits and actual portraits of some of the grandchildren and stuff when I was painting a lot in you know twenty years ago, and uh, I always enjoyed getting them, you know and. So, um, the pet portraits, people really enjoy, you know, but I've done a few of their animals when they were, a couple of them while they were still living, you know, and so, but. Yeah, I. I enjoy them. <laughs> I, I, one. The big surprise when they get one, they go, oh, wow. <laughs> one recent, uh, uh, commission from this last year, because I also, I, uh, I put the, uh, the image the final image up on my uh, various uh, websites where people can order apparel and um, a a lady who I did her, her pet chihuahua, you know, when she saw that I had it available on a tote bag, she immediately ordered that. 
So you receive the money up front for the initial commission, but then it keeps coming in later, you know, later on, you know, on apparel, you know, and you know, the percentage is not very big for the, for the apparel and home decor items, but still it's, you know, it's a nice feeling. Um, several years ago, a local client, uh, he, uh, wanted to, uh, do a couple portraits of his daughter's uh, pet uh, beta fish. She had a blue one and a red one. And just recently for the holidays, I did an, another piece for him of his cats. And he told me a story about the fish. He said the, uh, the red fish had passed away. And the year, a, a year after I had done the commission for him, he also ordered a large uh, floor pillow with that fish on it, with that image. And he said now after his daughter's fish passed away, she now just hugs that pillow and she, you know, his, his seven year old daughter is, is it, it just, it made it so easy for her to accept the death. It helped her, you know, through the grieving process that she had that pillow of her, of her pet fish. And uh, these are stories that are, nice to hear you know and this is what this is this is mm-hmm. the reason why i like creating this art you know i like doing art because and yeah i think people you know don't think the arts are that important you know some people in the world don't think i mean a lot of the school systems and stuff don't have arts anymore and they don't realize what an impact that the arts can have on people and you know it's Exactly. These kind of stories are what it's all about, and even if they're not commissions, I mean, people see your work and they they it takes them to a place they remember, or you know, they have some connection to it somehow, and it um, stirs something in their soul, and that's you know that's what it's all about. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, yeah. you know, art. You know, it's and there's enough art in the world. In fact, as far as I'm concerned, uh, I've had you know comments from other artists who think you well you know i can never sell anything because there's too many artists i personally don't think there are enough artists we need more artists you know in in the world because it's so subjective it is so subjective that uh, each each piece that is created by a unique human being with their thought process and their technique and their skill is one of a kind in the world and then somebody else that touches somebody else some some other person so it's not you know uh uh, you have art everywhere and i think people don't realize just you know how important it is to our society you know as as human beings i mean hey cavemen they were drawing things on the walls you know there's evidence of it <laughs> so i think it's just something that's uh it's a a human thing now that leads us on to the you know the uh, sergio uh video we recommended of uh, persistence keeping up persistent uh persistently making art persistently putting it out in the world and to keep it going. Uh, Diane, you want to add anything, you know, to the Sergio's comments there? Well, I think persistence is one of the hardest things about what we do because, you know, life gets in the way a lot of times, as we all know, and things happen and, you know, it gets kind of pushed aside sometimes because other things seem more important. And, you know, it is hard to be consistent and, persistent and you know you get a lot of things happen that um kind of discourage you or whatever along the way and it's it's so easy to just say well heck with it then and <laughs> you know <laughs> give up on your dreams of being an artist and uh, what that all means but yeah the persistence part of it and and consistency are the two hardest things to keep going i mean just to be able to keep going through adversity through you know life trials and tribulations and through uh, colds and sickness and health issues yeah and that, you know, the show must go on kind of thing no matter what 
So yep. it's a difficult, it's not the easiest profession to have to be in. One of the things that he mentioned, you know, when he talked about, no, it's not. Uh, you know, putting your art out there you're on social media and on the internet and everything. He says, uh, you know, some people, they say, well, I keep posting my art, but I never, you know, I don't seem to get any results or sales. And he said, and like he said, you never know. There are so many people that are on the internet and looking at your art. You never know when that one big sell or that one big opportunity is just one post away. You never know. It's just around the corner. Yeah. And if you don't reply to comments, if you don't, you know, uh, keep putting your art out there, you're never, you're going to miss it. You're going to miss that opportunity. And that, yeah. you know, involved with the, you know, the persistence and everything, which moves us on to the next video, which my favorite Gary Vanacek, you know, he talked about the, um, um, overcoming, you know, the, the fear of, of, judgment and that is a big thing for us human beings you know we don't like to be judged we don't like you know and uh, that's something that we've just got to uh you know overcome and not be afraid to you know especially as artists you know because our art is something something personal it's our babies it's what we created you know and uh, we don't like to uh you know have people say bad things about it but uh there are, uh, you know, people out there, uh, Constance, Diane, you want to, want to add, add to that? Or? Um, fear um, of, fear of judgment. That. It's, it's just kind of, um, I, I don't know. I've never really had a big issue with that, I guess, but it's so important to, as artists, especially, and I think a lot of artists are this way anyway, because otherwise we wouldn't be doing what we're doing are kind of independent and not really worried about that as much as, as most people, I think. I mean, we all want to have our individual art, you know, speak for itself and, and us. <laughs> so it's, I don't know. It's, I, well, I think a lot of us are that, but then I've also, I've encountered quite a few, uh, you know, artists that, uh, well, I'm not, you know, they go back, it goes back to the, well, I'm not good enough. I'm not good enough to put my art out there and it gets back to the thing of, you know, it, it's, it's good to look at other artists, other artists works on the internet, because if you look at it with the attitude of learning how they uh, completed a certain piece or how their, their process, but don't look at it as a comparison. Well, you know, I, I'm not as good as that person. Well, of course not. They, who knows? They've been probably doing it for yeah. five years. Depends on where you are in your art journey. You know? Yeah. Like I don't, yeah. you know, Diane it, is. It a, also depends on where you are in your journey. Exactly. Yeah. Diane is, is extremely talented. Her work is just it's wonderful. And when I look at her work, I'm looking at it from a learning is, well, how does she, how does she handle that light on that tree? How does she handle the colors? I don't even compare that because if I started comparing myself, oh my God, I just was throw my paintbrushes away and forget <laughs> it. I'm not going to catch up with Diane. Well, yeah. I never worried about uh, how I how I was against other people, like other artists. I always was more worried about being better than I was yesterday, like my, uh, to myself, not yeah, really. So I guess I, don't, I guess that's a mindset thing. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> That, that that's that gets into you know it gets into the fear so of judgment. Try to make your next painting better than the one you just made. Absolutely, yeah. that's that's yeah. what we should be doing. Yeah, mm -hmm. and uh, I think there's too many. I've I've encountered. I've talked with quite a few. You know, especially young artists. You know, they 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 uh, they get caught into that judgment trap and that comparison trap, and they just they they, they go down a rabbit hole. You know, it's just as yeah. But I think I mean, even when I was nice younger, I think you you don't look at it as a, like a, how comparing yourself to to somebody that's more advanced. I mean, I back then I looked at it as like you said, like somebody to learn from. You know, how did they do something, or how mm -hmm. how did they make that work, or whatever? It wasn't so much 
I can't do that. They're, they're better than me, <laughs> you know, I'm not, I'm, I'll never be that good kind of thing. It was more, what can I learn from them? And then that leads, no, yeah, it's leads like, how did they do that? How did they, that's what I like, yeah. is learning well, from other artists, you know, another, by looking at their work and trying to figure out. Absolutely, absolutely. that leads us into the uh, mm -hmm. other video that I recommend I came across, was it, the video is titled Wyeth's World, it's about the, Andrew Wyeth, and he's from uh, Diane's area. Now, that's a big comparison. That's, that's somebody that you really... <laughs> I can remember looking at, well, NC and um, Andy and Jamie, all three of them. They, I can remember looking at their work when I was young, you know, like in high school. And I did egg, egg tempera for a while, which is really funny. I had forgotten all about that until I saw that video. I was like, oh, yeah, I did that. And I did it because I had seen his um, Andy, Andrew's work. And uh, they, that, the Wyeth family was maybe, they were in Pennsylvania, which is maybe about an hour from where I grew up. And um, <clears throat> so I was very familiar with that, their work. But, yeah, that was, that was Andy's work with the egg tempera. That was one of the reasons I... <laughs> I um, did egg jumper for a while. I did a, quite a bit of that in high school. Wow. Yeah. That, <laughs> and I, I have never heard. This seems like a the, really interesting uh, yeah, I have, process. I had never heard of him, and I just came across a video by accident, and it was just fascinating. It was a good, uh, you know, hour-long video. was, And what what attracted me was one of his paintings that he's probably the most famous for is, uh, is called Christine. You know, it's a lady, she's, uh, she's laying in the field. Now, when I first saw that, I've seen that painting several times throughout the years. I thought it was just, you know, a lady who's just relaxing in the field. But then <laughs> when they told the story of how she yeah, was in the field, that, it. that's how she got around. She couldn't walk. And she was so proud that she refused to use crutches and to use a wheelchair. And she crawled around everywhere. And she was crawling. In, she wanted to go outside. She crawled in the field. And he said, when you, when you know that story and when you look at the painting, it makes sense of why she's positioned in a certain way. You know, and that, that uh, mm -hmm. just, it was just a fascinating story, a fascinating video, you know. And, he, yeah, his work, or all, all three of them really, their work is very detailed. If you see them in person, the um, egg tempera and the, well, even oil too, I guess you can get a lot, lot of detail, but the egg, egg tempera in particular, it's, it's almost, it's kind of a cross between like a watercolor and um, acrylic maybe. You, get, you can get a really, uh, a lot of uh, real detail in, in the work. Hmm. But well, he, was, he was very good at it. His work is beautiful. Yeah. 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 It was very, you know, <clears throat> like I said, I'd never heard of him before, but I was fascinated, you know, with the, with the story. And, uh, of course, and I've never, I've never tried egg tempera. I try, I remember in, in school, high school, we used tempera paints. They were already pre-mixed, you know, whatever, but, uh, the actual, using the what they used is it the yolk or is it the white the yolk it's the a yolk. yolk and they yeah. mix it with the mm -hmm. powder you mix it you use it basically kind of like a medium like you would a medium but you you mix it you have to mix it in with the paint uh i guess better than the, the mediums maybe but now one yeah. of my one of my uh, <laughs> uh favorite artists is uh, thomas hart benton you know, who did, who was famous for all the, you know, mural, murals on the walls, the large murals in the, in the, in the 1930s, you know, in the state capitol buildings and everything. And, you know, he did a, several murals in uh, Indiana, which is where I grew up. And uh, he was, he used egg tempera. Yeah. Egg te egg tempera. It's a real um, hard, it gives you a real hard um, surface. Like after it dries, it's really, um, uh, I don't know how you describe it. It's hard, it's hard to damage it once it's dry. It's like really hard. Oh, cool. <laughs> it's weird. It's wow. <laughs> huh. So that's why they stuck around for so long then. Yeah, yeah probably. I've never, 
I've never, a lot of the old frescoes, aren't the, some of the old frescoes done with egg tempura? Or is it just a, they the may uh, be. plaster? And you used to mix it with plaster. I mean, eggs were pretty readily they available. Also showed some other works. Yep. Wow. Yeah. Okay, we got a pretty cool binder, you know. We're about ready to wrap thing wrap things up here. Um we got any any announcements or anything? You know, anybody or is, other than that we're getting oh. we're getting better, our health is improving. Yeah. <laughs> getting over the codes. <laughs> I signed up last night for Mayfest in Tulsa again, so uh, hopefully they're gonna accept me and I'll go to Mayfest again, which is good. I did pretty good at Mayfest, so Fantastic. So, Diane, are you, uh, are you planning on uh, entering any exhibitions or any contests this year? Or? Um, I am. I'm not sure which ones yet. I've been trying to get <laughs> – I, I, I'm trying to get everything back in order after the holidays. So I'm trying to – I have a whole bunch of paintings sitting around here that I'm looking at them now, right now that I haven't gotten photographed and loaded on my website or anything yet. So I've got – that they all get caught up on a lot of things got let go when i was trying to get the commission done <laughs> yep exactly i know how that is yeah well yeah i don't have any major announcement i've got some exhibitions coming up here but i'm gonna hold off until i'm officially accepted yeah <laughs> it's like you know you're gonna enter enter five or six and get accepted in two and so so I'm still yeah. waiting for notification for some for some things to, you know coming up here for uh, February and March you know but um, so this you folks you've been listening to the Artist Friends podcast episode thirty for January the twentieth and I've been here with uh, Diane Hunt Constance Bronson my two best artist friends thank you so much for listening and I hope you continue to listen to us uh, throughout the year of uh, 2020 we got some exciting things uh, coming about good night everybody good night diane good night constance good night everyone good night everybody <laughs> all right constance you always like sometimes i gotta get her to look up to remember to say <laughs> good night everybody and thank you so much i, did, I said it good night <laughs>C-B-R-O-S-N-A-N-S Clyde J. Kale at www.cjkaleartworks.com If you'd like to participate or appear as a guest on the Artist Friends Podcast, please email cjkale at sign mystery-otr.com That's cjkale at sign mystery-otr.com this podcast is issued under the Creative Commons license. Thank you for listening.